This is Pony Prepper Bill, and today I'm going to do a quick video. It's well, I don't know how quick it's going to be. I want to talk about our future of eating and meat production and chickens and what we're really eating. And it's sleeting. It's rain, sleet, a little bit of snow. I see a couple snow things, but anyway, I'm going to go inside and hopefully it's not too echoey in there with the hardwood floors. So. Uh, this is Piney Prepper Bill, and I'll be right back. This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today I want to talk about a couple things I saw in the news and a couple people put me to a couple news links and stuff. And you know, you got this impossible burger, the impossible meat, all that garbage for you. They're trying to push. It's in every store now. Every fast food chain is selling it. But it, Patrick Brown, who is uh, the CEO for Impossible Foods in California, is in cahoots cohorts or whatever you want to call it he's in with bill gates and bill gates just bought all that farmland if you remember um let me see bill gates has 268,000 acres of farmland in the united states he's got across a whole bunch of different states you know washington idaho wyoming colorado new mexico arizona california nebraska wisconsin iowa illinois arkansas louisiana mississippi indiana ohio michigan north carolina and florida now the beyond meat the beyond burgers and the impossible burger they're in every store pretty much everywhere now they're in walmart you can buy it Bill Gates is, you know, for population control, trying to depopulate the, the, the country, depopulate the world with his vaccines. And he's in with uh, this Patrick Bowen with Impossible Foods. Now what he says, Impossible Foods is working on milk and fish substitutes as Patrick Brown pledges to put an end to animal agriculture industry. Patrick Brown is on a mission to eradicate the meat and fish industries by 2035. The CEO of Impossible Foods, a California-based company that makes genetically engineered plant-based meat, is deadly serious. No more commercial livestock farming or fishing. No more steak, fish, and chips or roast dinners, at least not as you know them. In their place, his company scientists and food technicians will create plant-based substitutes for every animal product used today in every region of the world, he promises. I want, to, I want to put the animal agriculture industry out of business. It's that simple. The goal is not because I have any will toward the people who work in that industry, but because it's the most destructive industry on the earth. Really? Making meat and eggs and poultry is the worst destructive industry on the earth? Well, how about the plastics company? All these, uh, they're putting Tesla cars out there and solar panels and solar fields. They want you to go solar. And the, you got to have batteries for all this stuff. What's the most pollutant companies? Plastic. Everything, when I was a kid, was cardboard, glass. Now everything's in plastic. And plastic is everywhere. We should be getting rid of plastic. For the second year in a row, Brand audit data revealed Coca-Cola is number one top global polluter. A total of 11,732 branded Coca-Cola plastics were recorded across continents in 37 countries. Coca-Cola, pieces of plastic, 11,000, 37 countries. Nestle, pieces of plastic, 4,000, 31 countries. PepsiCo. But you got all these other Colgate, Palmolive. All these companies are producing trash everywhere. The worst, the 10 worst polluting industries, used lead acid batteries, mining and ore processing, lead smelting, tanneries, uh, I 
gentlemen, this is gold mining. Industrial dump sites, industrial estates, chemical manufacturing, product manufacturing, dye industry. Okay, if Bill Gates wants to do something for the economy or whatever, how about all his computers? Uh, let me see here. Americans discard over 100,000 computers every day. Or this one. How about cell phones? We all get free upgrades. When you have a, a new cell phone, you get a new one, you have it for a year, you upgrade. On the average, cell phones are thrown away every day. Over 400,000 cell phones get thrown into the trash. 100,000 computers a day. All this stuff ends up in landfills. It doesn't go away. It's not. Do something with that. Get rid of all the plastic. We're going to be eating plant-based bullshit garbage in every store. They want, they're trying to get rid of the cows, the meat, the milk. In certain states, they want you now to register your cows. If you're growing chickens for yourself, you got 30 chickens and you might, you got a grocery stand or a stand out front and you're selling eggs and tomatoes. They want you to register your cats, your dogs, your chickens. That's where this is going. They, and in the, in the UK, they just, they were gassing chickens. They don't want us to grow our own food. They don't want us to grow our own meat. Bill Gates wants to get rid of it. Bill Gates is in with this uh, Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. He's in with these companies. And 3D printing. They're going to start 3D printing your food. We analyze the different components that uh, make those beautiful cuts and try to figure out which are the key components that we need to mimic in order to achieve those beautiful cuts of meat. We identified three main components, the muscle, the blood and the fat. These are the components that we need to mimic in order to reach the perfect beautiful steak. KFC, I've known for a long time they were putting stuff in, in the chicken. Did you ever eat a chicken nugget? The consistency, it's not chicken. I've never had a chicken that looked and felt and tasted like that. Well, it's because it's not real meat. Welcome back. Would you eat your favorite takeaway if it was made in a laboratory? The thought of 3D printed nuggets might not sound appetizing, but scientists say you won't be able to taste the difference. There's only one Kentucky Fried Chicken, always cooked fresh, with Colonel Sanders' original secret recipe of 11 different herbs and spices. Spinach, broccoli, chicken, salmon, kind of whole, kind of just runs the gamut. We were experimenting with a lot of new ingredients as well. Welcome to the future. Your printable food comes safely packaged in cartridges. Finger looking good. I suppose it's a laboratory in a kitchen, as long as it's clean. <laughs> Wouldn't put you off? No. Mmm, mmm. Simply take some cells from a real chicken, multiply them in the lab into a paste, and gently place that into a printer, similar to the one in your home office. Turn that paste into sheets, and layer upon layer, turn those sheets into cubes. Presto, you've got chicken nuggets. I'm gonna go get some KFC nuggets. So. Yeah. <laughs> Stand around a KFC long enough, like I did today, and you'll learn. Would you eat them if they were made in a lab? Yeah. I don't see why not, no. People aren't put off yeah. by it. Yeah, I would. If yeah. they tasted the same, what's yeah. the difference? If you wouldn't know, you wouldn't be able to tell. Personally, I'd probably prefer it. Well, Joanna, I'm guessing you've never had one of those. <laughs> no, I haven't. Joanna McMillan you know, is a nutritional scientist. Why are we making food in a lab now? 
Well, we have two big problems. One is environmental and sustainability kind of issues. Yeah. And the second is creating enough meat to feed the world's growing population. Would there be nutritional value in something that's made in a lab? Well, no, there's not. And that's what's a little frustrating for me, is why don't we think about recreating meat in the lab, but also make it healthier? And that's what's not happening. There's no substitute for real chicken. So they want to get rid of all these companies, all the meat companies, Cows are farting, and they put up, you know, uh, emissions, and we, we got to get rid of the cows. But it's only, listen to Bill Gates, it's only 6% of the cows to do the problem. Another thing is that uh, cows and other grass-eating species uh, have a digestion system that emits methane, and methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. And so cows alone... Uh, account for about 6% of global emissions. And so we need to change cows, uh, cows just cows alone. Uh, How are we going to do that? Well, uh, actually, of all the categories, uh, the one that has gone better than I would have expected five years ago is this work to make what's called artificial meat. And so you have people like Impossible or Beyond Meat, both of which uh, I invested in. Do you eat it as well? Or do you like it? Absolutely. You, do. Uh, you can go to uh, Burger King and buy the Impossible Burger. All right. Is it healthier for you or just healthier for the atmosphere? It's, it's slightly healthier for you in terms of less cholesterol. It's, of course, dramatic reduction in uh, methane emissions you know, animal cruelty, manure management, and the pressure that meat consumption puts on land use. He's talking about, uh, let's get rid of frickin' cows and let nature recover. They're gonna start replacing our milk, too. They wanna get rid of fish. They wanna get rid of the beef, the meat. Everything's gonna be 3D printed. You're gonna order stuff, it's gonna be printed. Or maybe you'll stay home because there'll be another lockdown and you'll order stuff off the menu. They'll email it to you and you print it out on your computer. Apple Foods showed off a milk prototype during a press conference this morning showcasing its R&D team. Now, just like its meat products, the milk is lab created. The company showed us in a demo mixing it with coffee how its milk that's on the left is more like cow's milk than other plant-based products like soy and almond on the right there. Impossible milk will not be going to market anytime soon though, but the company used it as an example of the types of products that are in its pipeline. The company is also announcing that it will be doubling the size of its R&D team from 150 to 300 over the next 12 months, and that'll include a team of 10 scientists. And they got, the, you have the movie Sterling Green, and what was it that everybody was eating? Everybody wanted the Soylent. What is the secret of Soylent Green? New York City in the year 2022. Nothing runs anymore. Nothing works. But the people are the same. And the people will do anything to get what they need. This is the police. What they need most is Soylent Green. The supply of Soylent Green has been exhausted. Return to your home. What is the secret of Soylent Green? Detective Sergeant Thorne. He has a two-year backlog of unsolved murders. Now he's on a case that must be solved. Saul Roth, Thorne's private library. Hey, Saul. A living book in a world without books. Have some pencils. Courtesy of your next assignment. William R. Simonson. Simonson. He was the first to learn the secret of soil and green. They told me to, uh, to say that they were sorry, but that you had become unreliable. <laughs> Saul Roth was the next to know. How do we come to this? And he chose to die rather than reveal the secret of Soylent Green. What is the secret of Soylent Green?
Charlton Heston, Edward G. Robinson, Chuck Connors, Lee Taylor Young, Brock Peters, Paula Kelly, and Joseph Cotton fight for survival and try to solve the most bizarre riddle ever to face mankind. The search for the secret of Soylent Green. You will find out why Soylent Green means life. You will find out why Soylent Green means death. We've got to stop him! What is the secret of Soylent Green? And what was Soylent? Soylent Green is made out of people. Hmm. <laughs> Soylent Green is people! So after a movie like that, where Soylent Green, people are eating people. Why would you have a company that's called Soylent? This is supposed to be a good company, uh, an alternative, but it's banned. It's banned in Canada. So why is it all this stuff in the United States that we're eating, some of the foods here that we eat, we can't ship to other countries because they put a ban on it. It's not considered food. It's not, it's not edible, but we eat it, but we can't ship it to other countries. And another thing, uh, just going along with the Soylent Green, people were eating people. They were overcrowded, they were overpopulated, and people were dying and they were turning them into food. Now this is, I, okay, I'm going into the left field here. Um, just wanted to know, every year about 600,000 people go missing in the United States. 600,000 people a year. That's half a million people a year go missing. Where do they go? In 2020, 543,000 people went missing. Uh, the COVID deaths that we had. How many people died from COVID? People weren't allowed to have funerals. Has anybody gone to a funeral like in the first couple months of this pandemic? Where did all the people go? People were dying and where did all these people go? And it's all about the same time where they were pushing this Beyond Meat, Impossible Burger, Impossible Meat. Yeah, it is impossible because you know what you're eating? You're eating Soylent. Uh, in the movie, Soylent Green takes place in 2022. And it's all about the same time with the agenda, you know? Agenda 2020, Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, Event, or what was it, Event 201? It's all happening now. So really, how good is this Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger and stuff like that? Is that really any better for you than the meat? Speaking of public debuts, Beyond Meat has been one of the hottest IPOs this year, but one consumer group is warning that some of the chemicals found in fake meat products could stop your cravings cold. You might have seen their ads, in fact, on our air even, the group launching a full-fledged campaign warning these popular plant-based products could have traces of toxic chemicals, some of which have been linked to cancer. Joining us now is Brianne Kincaid, Research Director at the Center for Consumer Freedom. Brianne, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me on. What did you find and which products did you test? Yeah, so we actually looked at the ingredient list of um, about 80 separate plant-based items. Um, we found that broadly these products are actually very uh, highly processed. Uh, some of them contain as many as 50 individual ingredients. Several of them uh, are artificial. And one of our main con uh, concerns with these products is that people understand that processed food is perhaps not so good for you. Um, but when you start calling it plant-based, people think that they're swapping out their beef burger for a vegetable, and that's absolutely not the case. 
Which products specifically are you are you pointing to? Because you, you sort of made it clear that it's not specifically Beyond Meat, that there are worse offenders that are out there uh, as options for consumers, and yet the ad makes it really look like it's Beyond Meat. So Beyond Meat uh, certainly has um, some items of concern. Um, I would say that pea protein isolate, which is uh, the bulk of their burger, um, it's not just peas that are ground up into the uh, in, into the product. Um, they go through a very heavy manufacturing process. And while we can't know the exact process because it's proprietary, there are other companies, um, usually ones that use uh, soybeans, that through this process it's called extrusion. Um, in order to separate the, the protein from the fat, they'll run it through a solvent called hexane. Now hexane is recognized by the federal government as a neurotoxin. Um, it's thought to have uh, uh, impacts on reproductive health um, and there have been studies recently in the last several years that consumer groups will actually go to grocery stores pick these items off of the shelves um, test the residual hexane in them mm -hmm. and find that the the levels are actually higher than those allowed in the European Union but the the bulk of our, our research really pointed to the idea that these these products are processed and they're they're being marketed as, as though they weren't uh, I don't drink bottled water. We don't drink any of that stuff. We don't go to fast food restaurants. We don't. We don't go to McDonald's. We don't go to Burger King. I used to love McDonald's growing up, and we haven't probably gone to fast food in two years. Now we were out one time and we were hungry. We were coming home and said, you know what? We got 45 minutes by the time we're home, and then we got to cook. It's like you know, there's a McDonald's. It's been a long time. You know, let's, let's just get a burger. I think we've got two burgers. And we shared a French fry, it was like 12 or $13. And the burger was horrible. The, the, I used to love, they had the best French fries. They were horrible. It tasted like it had a metallic taste to it. it tasted like a tin can, a rusty tin can. The next day, I almost didn't make it home. I was in the bathroom all, all night and all morning. I was in the bathroom after eating McDonald's. So in the last year and a half, I probably went to McDonald's three times three strikes you're done now they're all pushing this beyond meat stuff I don't know if they stop getting the meat if the meat supply is done and they can't if it's too expensive with the meats too expensive and shipping it with the gas prices maybe all these places are going to be pushing this beyond meat and they're not going to tell you so I'm not eating any fast food I refuse to buy it it's this is, the whole COVID thing was like one of the worst zombie apocalypse movies I've ever seen. If it was, on, if it, if it was a movie, I would have flipped the channel or wanted my money back because it was horrible. And now we're pretty much living in the Soylent Green movie. So, this is Pony Prepper Bill. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I apologize, but I just wanted to put the stuff in there. And I don't know how long these video clips are. I just want to put that out there. All this stuff is bad for you. And what's good for us, what we're used to, they want to get rid of. Depopulation and uh, bring you all this Soylent. Soylent's coming to a town near you. We're going to be living in the zombie apocalypse and the Soylent Green movie. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Soylent Green is made out of people. Hmm. <laughs> Soylent Green is people!